All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, this church, uh, initially when Paul, we started going through this, uh, Paul was talking to this church. What, what's one characteristic that he has highlighted about this church consistently? That they are what? Mm-hmm. Babes. What's another word? They are babes in Christ, true. What else do we say they are? They are also what? Immature. Mm-hmm. All right. Having a uh, uh, problem of focusing on the real things and not uh, allowing things that don't matter to become major issues. And so what we're going to see here is that this trend continues. It's going to continue. All right. So. Uh, we're going to be studying now as Paul gets into this aspect of spiritual gifts. Um, and he introduces it again, just like how he introduced other things. He says, now concerning spiritual gifts. All right. And so, um, you know, in verse eight, he says, now as touching the things of where on, uh, of, uh, uh, idols, you know, when he was talking about verse eight. So he brings up all these different topics that, obviously were brought to his attention as a concern within this church. Right? And so now he's getting ready to deal with something that is very, very interesting. And you're going to see that a lot of people put a lot of weight on this particular chapter. And we're going to talk about that and uh, I'm going to give you some things that I feel the Lord has, uh, has pointed out here. Sometimes we might overlook. We just might overlook it. But, uh, and that's the key. It don't matter what I say or what anybody else say. What does it say right here in the scripture? That's the key. So let's take a listen to chapter 12. Chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit withal. For to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, 
and members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet shew I unto you a more excellent way. All right. So there we go with chapter chapter uh, 12. Uh, I'm going to talk about that last verse before we get any further. The last verse says, But covet earnestly the best gifts. But then it says this statement, Yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So we're going to talk about these gifts of the Spirit. But there's something else about the Spirit that's even more excellent than these gifts. Anybody know right offhand what that might be? Love. Which is a what? A fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, is vastly more valuable than the gifts of the Spirit. But the gifts of the Spirit are necessary. All right. Now, why is that? Well, the, the gifts of your body are necessary. And Paul uses this illustration. He talks about seeing, hearing, smelling, right? He talks about the head, the hands. All those things are necessary. But what's more necessary, what's more important, when you see somebody that has a, a, a body that's functioning, he's got ears and eyes and nose, but what's more important about how this person is, more so than whether he has a full body, is how he what? Acts. What he does with his body. What he does with his mind. What he does with his, with his actions. That has more value on who this person is than rather this person has fully a fully functional functional body. And so it's the same thing with the spirit. We're going to receive a, a list and, 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 and some illustrations here about the spirit of God, but more of, of, about the gifts of, of the spirit, I should say. But more importantly than these gifts, because the gifts are given to, to everybody that's a believer. No believer has every gift. And no believer is without a gift. Every believer has a gift directly from God. And that's key to keep in mind. God gives these gifts to, to each and every one. And so we're going to kind of go into this and we're going to uh, talk about it. Now, one thing I want to point out is that when you look at these gifts here, you're going to see a list. This is by no means an exhaustive list. And we're going to break it down a little bit. Because there are, there are gifts that just cannot be named. All right? Do you see in this verse anything about the gift of cutting stone? No. But is that a gift? Yes. Well, let's go to Exodus 31. Everybody turn to Exodus, book of Exodus, chapter 31. got it? Let's take a look. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Beazel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. Verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, we're going to see that in, in, in 1 Corinthians. And in understanding, we're going to see that. And in knowledge, we'll see that. And with all manner of workmanship. Who? Workmanship. Workmanship. Gift of God. Verse 4. To devise cunning works to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in the cutting of stones to set them 
and in the carving of timber. What? This carving of timber? Gift that came directly from God? To work with all manner of workmanship. All right? And behold, I have given with him that guy. All right? The son of that guy. I'm not, I don't feel like pronouncing all them names there. <laughs> of the tribe of Dan. And in the heart of all uh, that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. All right? And this is uh, when God was instructing Moses to build the tabernacle. All right? And so he gave gifts to people to do a task that God wanted done. So gifts are oftentimes God-directed. They're giving not as just a wimp or a whim, but they're giving for a purpose. That's why you should use your gift. Now, do you remember when Jesus gave the story? He told the story of the man that received the five talents. Another one received four talents, and another one received, I mean, another one received two talents, and another one received one talent. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Now, the guy that received the five talents, what did he do? He went out and did what? Multiplied. He multiplied it, and he ended up with what? Ten. Same thing with the guy that had two. He went out, multiplied it, ended up with four. The guy that had one talent, what did he do with his talent? Buried. He buried it. He goes, I'm not using this. All right. He goes, when God comes, I'm going to say, here's the talent you gave me just the way you gave it to me. I didn't develop it. I didn't use it. I didn't increase it. I didn't do anything. And God said one thing to that, to that person. He called him a what? A Ooh. wicked and unprofitable servant. All right? And so he said, you should have used this. And you should have done. And now the whole purpose of it is to say that when God gives you something, he expects you to use it. Point blank. There's nothing else to be said about that. He expects it to be used. But you won't know that you, don't, that you have it without understanding that you must first build that relationship with God where God can communicate. And that relationship with God is built on a variety of ways. And now we're going to talk about why we have these gifts because people with the gifts that God has given helps one another to develop that what? Relationship with God. All right? So, let's go in and see this. This is an important aspect. All right. Each one of these gifts are here for a purpose, but they're all aimed at helping you develop a relationship with God and you to help others to develop relationships with God. That's the purpose of the gifts. All right. When God gave um, those, those men in Exodus the gift to work with stones and gold and silver and, 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 uh, and, and uh, timber. He didn't give them that gift to build idols. He gave them the gift to build what? The temple. The temple is something that represented their relationship with God. It's the same thing. All, right? all gifts are for that purpose. They're not for your own glory. All right? And remember, uh, these are called the gifts of the what? Spirit. That means that the Spirit of God dwells within us and works what? Through us. All right? One thing that Jesus said about the Spirit was that he, go, he said, I must go away because if I don't go away, the, the Comforter, the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost, will not come. But when I do come, he will uh, show you all, bring you into all truth and all knowledge. And one thing else he says, that he will not speak what? Of him self. But when he does speak, he will speak of who? Of Christ. He will glorify Christ. And that's an important aspect too. You'll, you'll know that your gift is your gift because you, to you, it just seems like whatever. But everybody else is going, how'd you do that? But for you, it's like, it's just something that you know you just, you just do. And that's a blessing and a gift that's given to you by God. All right? Um, and, and yes, a lot of times it takes, then it takes another person that has another gift to help you to recognize what? Yeah. Your gift. Yeah. And that's important. That's why we all should work what? 
together. Right? Um, there's a lot of things that I can't do. And I said, well, I need people that can do things because I, I, I can't do certain things. But then what I can do, I try to do. It's the same thing. You have to recognize what it is that you can do, but then also recognize what you can't do. And you need gifted people in that area to help you with that. All right? So now, verse 12. It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. In another way, he's trying to tell them what? Because if I don't explain this to you, you're going to continue in the way that you are, which is what? Ignorant. ignorant. So he's, he's being nice when saying, y'all don't know what you're doing, really. You're, you're, you're kind of off base in this aspect of spiritual gifts. So he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye are Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So he's saying, you guys have come a long way. You were just heathen Gentiles that didn't believe in the Lord chasing after these idols that were that had no power, no authority, and nothing. That's why he called them dumb idols. All right? Verse 3. Wherefore I gave you to, to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse. You cannot say there is no God, there is no Jesus, there is no Holy Spirit, there are nothing, there is... When you say that, you are not speaking for God. And that's a key verse. The reason why I say it's a key verse is because right here, the Spirit, through Paul, and Paul is a what? And a, an apostle. apostle. One of the gifts that they are given is apostle, the gift of, 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 of an apostle. And I'll explain that a little bit later as we go through here. But the Spirit of God is now using Paul's a, 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 apostleship, that gift, yeah to speak and to say this. And it's important to keep in mind because when the Antichrist comes, the Antichrist, the Bible says the Antichrist would, would if it were possible, would deceive even the very what? Elect. But he's going to deceive people through doing miracles and all kinds of so-called wonders. But you got to understand the difference between true miracles or works of God versus what? Falsehood. How do you recognize truth from falsehood? By making sure you are very familiar with truth. The, the reason why you know a, mon a Monopoly $10 bill is not a United States currency $10 bill is because you have seen a United States currency $10 bill, correct? Mm -hmm. And that one's very easy. Okay. Because, so your knowledge of real money helps you to be able to uh, discern the difference between what? Play money. Mm -hmm. But the better you are, because some people aren't, when they're trying to, trying to pass false money, they don't pass monopoly money. They pass money that what? Mm -hmm. Looks like right. real money. So the more you know about real money, the easier it will be for you to recognize Something's wrong with the way it, it, it feels. Something's wrong with this color here. There's something off with this little pattern. The more you know about real money, the easier it will be for you to recognize counterfeit or false. Same thing when it comes to the Spirit of God. That's why we study. That's why we seek to know the Lord. That's why we, we get into the Word. That's why we pray. The more you know and understand and have a relationship with God and with the Spirit of God, the, the easier it will be for you to recognize falsehood. Because the falsehood comes, it's not coming just to say, hey, I'm, a, I'm, I'm something else. It's coming to deceive you. And unfortunately, the Bible says many will be deceived. And they're going to be deceived because they're not familiar with truth. And therefore, the Bible says they will believe a lie. You won't believe a lie if you are familiar with truth. It's important that we do that. So the Spirit of God uh, um, is telling Paul to, to, to put this in here, that no man uh, speaking by the Spirit of God can call Jesus a curse. So anytime somebody starts talking about Jesus ain't this and Jesus is not, and Je right off the bat, you know they are not speaking from the Spirit of God. 
you can just chalk that right on up. So they got this day coming up, this this atheist day. I don't know if y'all heard about this. Yeah. You know, it's coming up, and they're gonna have you know this big old gathering down, and I think it's in Washington, and then you know, they're gonna you know, and I, I I'm just praying that they have the biggest thunderstorm and. <laughs> Flood it on out. Yeah, I'm just saying, well, I'm like, God, just just show your power, show your authority to mm -hmm. these people, you know. But once again, God is patient. Mm -hmm. He lets, he, he, he will just let, and, and sometimes you want them to have that kind of issue so that they would say, hey, you know what, maybe we need to recognize this. But God is patient. Mm -hmm. When you dig in your hole, he lets you dig it deep. Mm -hmm. I would be like, well, God, just let them see that you're not, that you are real. And they will be like, you know. Um, oh, use the bathroom in the hall. Yeah, that bathroom's not working right now. All right. So um, it's important that we keep that in mind. All right, let's go on to this, this uh, next portion here. It says, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. All right. So. When a person says and means it from their heart, not just lip service, but when a person truly believes, I believe, I know in my heart that Jesus is God. He is Lord. He's Messiah. He's King. When you, when you can say all that stuff and just in your being just know it, you can't say that unless the Spirit of God puts that in you. All right? Verse 4. Now, there are diversity of what? Gifts but the same spirit. The, remember that word diversity. And there are differences of administration, but by the same Lord. Diff all right. So you have diversity of gifts. You have uh, different administrations of gifts. Look at verse 6. And there are diversities of operations, but is the same God which worketh all in all. So, now this lets you know that there are flavors. See, if I was to say that, let's say that the gifts were like desserts. So you got your cookie gifts, you got your pie gifts, you got your ice cream gifts, right? You got your, you got your cake gifts. All those are what? Desserts. Desserts. But now, let's break it down. Let's go to cake. All right. So is all cake alike? No. Now, cake is definitely different than ice cream. And cake is different than the cookies. And cake is different than pie. But there are certain cakes that are different from other cakes. Mm -hmm. So you can have, I got the gift of cakes. But I'm a chocolate cake. Well, I got the gift of cakes, but I'm an angel food cake. I'm a gift of cake, but I am a pineapple upside down cake. So you see the now why am I bringing this illustration in? Because somebody can say, well, I have the gift of wisdom or the gift of knowledge or the gift of teaching. And you think that, well, if this person got the gift of teaching, this person got the gift of teaching, this person got the gift of knowledge, this person got the gift, and all that, then they should act exactly the same. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. So you can people can have a, a the same gift, but have diversities in the gift, mm -hmm. different administrations of the same gift, mm -hmm. different operations. Of the same gift. So now you just multiply that thing even more. Mm -hmm. So every gift that you can think that you know of, you can then say, well, that gift is that gift, but then our gift can also operate this way, and it can operate this way, and it can operate this way. So now what did you do? You just we just blew that up exponentially. It's now real big. A variety of ways that your gift can be what? Manifest. Mm -hmm. All right? And so you can't pigeonhole people. Well, if you have the gift of uh, uh, of, uh, of leadership, like this person's got the gift of leadership, why aren't you doing like he doing? Well, because my operation is different. I have a different administration of the gift. See, so that's why it's important to bring these opening marks, remarks that Paul is making. These are very fundamental, foundational marks, remarks that he's making about the gifts. So we don't just get into the aspect that the gift has to look like mine. If you got the gift I got, you should be working like me. Necessarily, you should be doing what God has put in your heart to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, verse seven says, 
But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit where uh, uh, withal. So the gift is given you to do what? To fail? No, to, to do prosper. what? To prosper. To profit. All right? So that's the purpose. God has given you the gift to prosper. Now, don't think that that means that he's giving you the gift to make life easy. It didn't say that. It didn't say to make it easy. It didn't say to make you rich either. Because some people, they can't, they, they can't read that without thinking money. They think prosper, profit, it must mean I'm going to be a millionaire. That's what I got the Spirit of God for. No. To, to, to prosper or to profit in what? In what God has called you to do. Let's go back to Exodus. He gave those gentlemen the gift to do that. To do what? To profit in what? To build a temple. To build a temple. That was the project. And that was the, the goal. And when you were following the Spirit of God, that gift will help you to succeed. You will be prosperous or you will be profitable towards the goal. Jesus told us that we should pray how? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's the acknowledgement and the, and the recognition. Then he said, thy kingdom come. All right. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're, we're building, we're helping to, to assist in the development of the workings of God's kingdom in, in people. Thy kingdom come on earth. earth, even as it is in where? Heaven. So we're trying, to, we're trying to replicate and to mirror what's going on. Now, are we going to be able to do it perfected, perfectly, perfectly by our, with, within this time? No, because God's going to have to come and then he's going to do what? Set everything in order. But what the Bible does say for us to do is to what? Occupy until till I come. So just keep doing, using your gift until I get here. All right? That's how you do that. All right. Um, verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. All right? Now, the word of wisdom, that's a gift of being able to speak wisdom into a situation. Because see, you can have a lot of knowledge, mm -hmm. all right? And, and, and you also need to know uh, what's true. But wisdom knows how to apply it, when to apply it. It knows when to ignore. Wisdom knows things. And so there's a word of wisdom, ability to know what to say, how to say it. Uh, it's a gift. And um, it's given to us by God. To another, the word of what? Knowledge. By the same spirit. All right? Knowledge is, is important to know. It's important to know things. See, when, a, when an architect says, I want to build this bridge and I want it to look like that, the person that has knowledge of, of forces and angles and, 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 and torque and all that different kinds of stuff that has to do with, with balance and weight, and, and he can look and go, yeah, you can build it, but you ain't going to get no cars across it. It's going to crash. Because he has what? Knowledge. knowledge. He knows 2 plus 2 equals 4, but the way you got it right now, that building, 2 plus 2 is going to equal nothing because mm -hmm. it's going to crash. So he has the knowledge. All right? And knowledge is important. And that's why we should, we should continue to always seek to what? Understand and know. You know don't, don't just be happy being ignorant. I mean, what did Paul say? Brother, I would not have you what? Ignorant. ignorant. And one of the problems we got now in our world is they, they really want our, our, our young folks ignorant. And you can say what you want. I see it. You watch these television shows that are geared towards young people. It is nothing but ignorance. Mm -hmm. See, when I was growing up, they used to have shows that at least they taught you something. I remember that. Right. I remember The Wonderful World of Disney. You remember that? Mm -hmm. I, I, the Disney is still out there, but the shows they're putting out now, is just, and you watch all these TV shows with the young folks, and there's never a parent in the show. Do you ever notice that? There's no parent in the show. They're, those days are gone. You don't have the Cosby's. You don't have the family ties anymore. You don't have the fathers knows best. So they, they, it, it's just a lot of ignorance. Mm -hmm. 
just being and so when you look at it it's like well what lessons are, are taught and so you got to almost search there are some out there that you can watch and you can feel that the kids are learning something but most of them you look at there and, and and it's all about just just being light and comedy and laughter and everything and some of it is is harmless but but there's so much of it to the point that where it's it's, it's over indulgence of silly slapstick comedy. It just don't make no sense, you know. Between SpongeBob and and all these other things, I don't have a problem with it. I think he is. It's got some cute, funny aspects to it. But the, the reality of it is, you can't be watching. All, you have your kid watching only that. Mm-hmm. You know. Y'all remember Sesame Street? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sesame Street. You know, Electric Company. Mm-hmm. You know, all, they don't have stuff like that. And maybe. They do, but it gets drowned out because there's so much other stuff. And it's important for you to recognize that you do have to bring knowledge um, to yourself. Uh, but the ability to understand and to know what you know. Because, see, a lot of times people get information. See, what knowledge is, knowledge is being able to understand and decipher and to make sense of information that you have been given. Because you can give a lot of people information, and, and all you gave them was information. They have no idea what you just said. Yeah. See, if I tell you, if I say, um, I want you to go home and check and see if you have a Cat6 cable. And I just gave you information. What are you going to go home and check? What you said. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that. Right. I don't have it or not. I got some cable in there. Right. Well, all that is is a, a an Ethernet cable. It's a style of Ethernet cable mm-hmm. that connects a computer to a router. All right. Most cables are Cat five, but they now have Cat six. Six. And so we tell people to go ahead and get a Cat six cable if you're going to connect your computer directly to the to the router. But if you didn't have the the knowledge. Basically, I mean, that, that's my field of, 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 inform- of, of knowledge, <laughs> technology. So when it comes down to this hardware and, and basic stuff, when, pe- when they say things about that, I know what they're talking about because of the knowledge base. But if you don't have a knowledge base, people will talk to you all day long, and all they're doing is giving you information. You have, n- you have no ability to bring it into common true usage for yourself. And all you're hearing is words. You can remember the words, cat six, but you don't know what it means. You don't know how to apply it, nor could you use it in a sentence, unless you copy the sentence I just used. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So all of that is important to keep in mind. These are the things that we should be trying to do. Uh, but the gift of that is given by God. All right. So God's able to allow you to take information that you get, and more importantly, it's a lot of times it's spiritual information, and turn it into some real uh, sound uh, knowledge. All right, verse 9. To another, faith by the same spirit. All right, and faith is important because there are certain people that just need to know God's, going, God's got it covered. Mm-hmm. Now, once again, that don't mean just because you, you have faith that there is no problems. Mm-hmm. Some people think, well, if you got enough faith, you're not going to have any problem. You know, Daniel had faith. He got thrown in the lines there. Mm-hmm. Hebrew boys had faith. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the, the, the Hall of Fame of Faith, there's some, a lot of people got into predicaments but came out. But there also were those that got thrown into predicaments and died. All right? You know, historically it is, it is taught that when, it, when in, in uh, Hebrews, when it talks about those that were put in hollow logs and sawed and, 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 and sword in half, that uh, one of the prophets that they uh, historically say that happened to was the prophet Isaiah. That he was put inside a hollow log, and they took a saw and just sawed him in half. All right? And so, but that still doesn't mean that he didn't have what he had faith to die. Stephen's, remember Stephen mm-hmm. in the book of Acts, mm-hmm. he had faith, mm-hmm. but he was what stoned, stoned to death. So, people a lot of times incorrectly use this. Well, if you got this. You're going to be able to withstand anything. Well, you can withstand anything that God has appointed you to withstand. Mm-hmm. But sometimes the Lord will bring you on, allow that. You will come home standing on your strength. Mm-hmm. But that's important to keep in mind and not to manipulate it and use it in the wrong way. And then make another person feel bad. Mm-hmm. Okay, Because uh, 
because of what we're going to say here in this next one. And we're, we're going to pick it back right on this, th this statement based on this. To another, this is verse 9, the second half of that, to another, the gift of healing by the same spirit. See? So some people say, well, if you had faith and healing, you should never be sick. And there are people that teach that. that if there's, there's something wrong with your faith, there's something wrong with your relationship with God if you are sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine going to a church like that and you have the sniffles? Mm -hmm. Or you got the sneeze? Or you coughing? I think I'd just stay home rather than be, oh, I wonder what he did. He's sneezing over there. Something ain't right with you, bro. And so, I mean, that don't make no sense. It, it's, it's really ridiculous the way people take these things and misuse it. But once again, how do you recognize counterfeit? By being familiar with the truth. We, we know what the word is saying here. And so, therefore, because we know that when people say that, we go, that ain't right. Mm -hmm. That's not true. All right. Verse 10. To another, the working of what? Miracles. Oh boy, now have that been misused? So these last two, the healing and miracles. How many times have you said we're going to come down here to one of these uh, Holy Ghost revivals, healing and miracle services? Mm -hmm. All right, and you're going to get healed. Now all that is, is wrong. All right. First of all, Jesus said the Spirit of God will not speak of its what? Itself. 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 So right, the, right, right from the very beginning, this is a Holy Ghost revival. Let you know that the Holy Ghost didn't give him that title. Because mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost ain't gonna put his name as the top bill. Mm -hmm. The Holy Ghost will always glorify who? God. Jesus, God, mm -hmm. and not himself. So right off the bat, that lets you know this. Uh, uh, you know, and and sometimes it's it's just ignorance. Well, I wonder what God want me to call. It. I think He want me to call it the Holy Ghost. Spirit of God, you know, no, that's not what God has called you to call it. All right? Because it tells you right off the bat that uh, it will not speak of itself. But then you got folks who are saying that, you know, they have the, the gifts of healing and they and they have you come up. and But you can't get healed until you first, first do what? Sow a seed. You got to sow a seed. It's important for you to give that money. That's what's going to initiate. That's what's going to break, break you through. That's what's going to break you free. And they're gonna have, that's gonna give you your breakthrough. Mm -hmm. All, but all that breakthrough comes with what? Cash. Cash. And it's wrong. It's manipulative. And so how do you recognize it's wrong? By being what? Familiar with the truth. The that's how you're able to identify because they're not they're not coming like monopoly money. Mm -hmm. It's coming as very, very shrewd counterfeits. That have a purpose. They are not in it for the glorification of God. Because, you know, you know, to all the goodness and grace be to God. If God was to give me or any of anybody here, I believe, a gift of healing, the first thing I'm going to do is go to the hospital. I'm going to where the sick people are. I'm going to the to the place where the people are crazy. Mm -hmm. And I ain't. Char I'm not going to charge them nothing. No, I'm, I'm saying if that's if that was something I had, mm -hmm. I mean I'd be setting people free all day long. Mm -hmm. God be like, will you stop? <laughs> I'd be like, well, God, I, I want to use it, but but they use it wrong. Mm -hmm. If they have it at all, and my doubt, my my my, my belief is they don't have it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a it's a counterfeit. It's a, it's a farce. So uh, when you when you recognize that it's important yes we do believe in healing we do believe in miracles mm -hmm. all right but it comes by god's design not by any manipulation of man to another prophecy all right the ability to speak truth whether that truth is past mm -hmm. present or future that's what a prophet is a prophet is somebody that speaks truth, truth. Mm -hmm. and that, that i mean directly from god that's god's truth and it don't matter whether he's talking about yesterday, today, or tomorrow. And that's why Isaiah was a what? Prophet. Because he talked about his day, and he talked about what? Future times. But it don't matter the fact that it hadn't happened yet. It's still what? True. John, the Apostle John, was an apostle and a what? Prophet. Given to him by uh, Jesus Christ directly. All right? To another discerning of spirits. And this right here, I think, is one of the most important gifts. 
Because right off the bat, it lets you know when somebody is operating awesome. from a different spirit. Mm -hmm. Once again, let's go back to uh, uh, you know when you when you when you are eating or drinking something. You you know one of the worst things you can you can do is get you a a, a cup of milk and drink it and then realize the milk has what it's it's going, going bad. You are, but right off the bat, you know, uh, this ain't good now. Mm -hmm. But the ability to, to, to sense what things are. Now, somebody could pour you a glass of something to drink and blindfold you and say, drink this. What is this? And, you, oh, that's grapefruit juice. Oh, that's, that's, that's Pepsi. Oh, that's pineapple juice. Oh, that's, that's uh, uh, Hawaiian punch. And you can tell it by the what? Taste. 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 There's something about your taste buds that instantly can help you recognize and identify something. Mm -hmm. Same thing we do with, with uh, um, people's faces. You ever look at a picture of a person when they were in, when you, you didn't know when they were younger or when they were in mm -hmm. high school and they're older, but then when you look at them, you can look at that picture and you go, hey, that, that, that's, I bet you that's Haywood Matthews. That, that is Haywood right there. Mm -hmm. I can tell. Mm -hmm. All right? Why? Because there's something about the ability of the, the human eye and the brain to recognize certain features where you know, I can recognize that's that person even though that's the person when they was 14 mm -hmm. versus now when they're older. All those things are, are, are built into our natural abilities. Well, there, there are people that have the gift of the spirit where they can see and recognize the spirit of a person mm -hmm. and can tell this is a good spirit this person has a bad spirit. This person has a manipulative spirit. This person is saved, but they got a spirit of greed. They got a spirit of jealousy. They got a mm -hmm. spirit of lust. They got a spirit of hate. They got a spirit of envy. Mm -hmm. All these things that people can see. Mm -hmm. right? Now, we can look at each other's face, and you can tell sometimes when somebody's happy. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> we went out yesterday for Elijah's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> happy. Oh, he was happy. But you know, when you're in the restaurant, and we were at one of them all-you-can-eat places, and there was this guy. He walked in. Now, first of all, he 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 was he he. You could tell he was happy from the beginning. He had his, he had he had a Looney Tunes jacket on, and he had a, a Superman sweatshirt sweatshirt on, and. He was just, he just got there and he took his stuff off and he went to the thing, got his plate, and he came back, man, he had lobster crab legs and stuff, man. And he came back and he <laughs> and he he came back like somebody just told him the funniest joke in the world and he's trying not to laugh. He had such a smirk of smile on his face, like, man, yeah, I can't be and you just had to see it. Selena, he was there, you saw him, right? <laughs> I mean, you couldn't tell this brother he was not having a good time. He was just I'll tell you, he was grinning from the inside. He was he had his plate, man. He was he was he was where he wanted to be. It was a, and you just you just looked at him and it was just a joy. You know, you hate to stare at people. Right. right. But it was a joy just to watch him bring that plate from where the food was to his table. Man, he had such joy, I tell you. But you could see it on his face. Now the spirit of God is like that. All right? You have a spirit, and people that can discern spirits can discern. I, I don't. I didn't. I didn't speak to him. All I could do was just see. And when you have a discernment of spirits, you don't have to speak to people. You don't. You could just yeah. be around, and sometimes you don't got to be around them. You, it just pop in your mind, or mm -hmm. God allow. However, it is, mm -hmm. God will give you the ability to. to now, them, those kind of folks that have that gift. You can't get over. You can forget it. You gonna try and they wake up one day and they gonna and, and it's like they're gonna be like, I gotta go do this. Why? Why you got? Why, I gotta go see so and so. Why? I don't know. I just gotta go see him. There's something in them. They got that gift. <laughs> and you don't you don't want to try to like get over on them, right? Because it ain't happening. So there are a lot of people that have that gift, and that, that, that's once I say that's one of the most important gifts in the body of Christ. All right, to another, diverse kinds of tongues, and that's one of the most misused gifts. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk about that. I won't spend the time now, but I tell you, folks, they don't misuse that gift, and we'll, we'll deal with that in a, uh, another time. 
But that's been just totally blown out of proportion. People, you know, oh, I, I, I know you say because you speak in tongues. That ain't got nothing to do with it. All right? You say it because you accept Jesus as your what? As your Lord and Savior. That's why you're saved. All right. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same spirit. All right? Divided to every man severally as he will. So all of this was given by the Spirit, and he, and he divides these gifts to each person as God, through the Holy Spirit, desires to do so. All right? Now, look at verse 12. For as the body is one, now he's talking about what? The, the, body. the, 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 the body, body. The physical body. And having what? Many members, and all members of the, that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. We are part of the what? The body of Christ. Christ. All right? Uh, we, have, we have such uniqueness in us, whereas we are part of the body of Christ. But then another aspect of us, and another way of looking at us, we are the what? Bride of Christ. All right? We also are the church of Christ. You see? So there's, a, there's, a, there's lots of, you know, like chocolate cake, pineapple upside down cake, you know, all different types of things. And so we are like that too. We have a, diff a lot of flavors to us, which is important to keep in mind because we, we act and react in a variety of ways according to how the Spirit of God is moving in the body. All right? All right, so um, <clears throat> verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, or whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink unto one spirit. So it don't matter if you're saved, it don't matter your circumstance. Bond, free, rich, poor, black, white, uh, Jew, Gentile. When you are saved, you are all part of the what? One body. body. The believers in Christ. We're all of one. Okay? Verse four, 14. For the body is not one member, but what? Many. Many. All right, so now he's saying, the thing that makes up the body is the, is the, the uh, variety, the, 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 the vastness of the members. Okay. That's what makes up your body. Your body is not a body because you all are just one head. You see a head walk floating through here. Well, first of all, I don't know how long we're going to stay in here. But the same thing is, is that you need a head that has a neck and shoulders and arms and, and torso and feet and all that. That makes the what? The body. body. All right? And it's important to keep that in mind. 15. If the feet say, because I am not the head, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And the answer to that is what? No. no. The feet are just as much the body as the what? The head. The head. But now the head, the face, is very seldom ever, what, covered. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, everybody in here got their feet covered. Mm -hmm. All right? Feet is just not something that we always just show out, but we show out the what? Mm -hmm. The head. All right? And it's important. And we recognize most of the time by the, by the head. Now, if, if somebody take a picture, remember I told you the example. I can look at a picture of a Hayward when he was probably 14, maybe to describe him. But if you take a picture of his feet right now and, and don't show me nothing but his feet, I wouldn't know those were Hayward's feet. Why? Because we don't associate with the feet. The feet is more of a, a what? A covered part of the body. But it's still part of the what? Body. body. All right. Now we're saying that because not every member of the body of Christ is always what? Seen. But that member is still very important. Because though his face is important in recognition, where is his face going without his feet? And when his feet don't feel like walking, where is his face going? Today. Face ain't going nowhere. All right? So it's important to keep in mind. Sometimes you think, I don't need you because, you know, everybody knows about me. No, you need me because if the face, you know, once again, you get into that situation where you, you know, you, you personify the things of the, of the body. And if the face is arguing with the feet, and the feet like, well, you know, the face like, well, I'm going to go out here and I don't want you. At. And the feet like, well, you go ahead. Go. You go. Go. Mm -hmm. And the face like, 
well, I, I can't go. You got to take me. Oh, no, you talk about how you don't need me? You, know, you go on by yourself then. And so the face is trying to convince the arms and the, and the legs to go. And the, and the legs saying, I can't do nothing unless the feet go. If the feet don't move, the feet don't let me stand on it, I can't, if the feet don't create balance, mm -hmm. I, I'm over-exaggerating this because I'm trying to get you to see that we need every person of the body. There is no unnecessary part. All right. All right. And that's kind of like what these next verses are going to be talking about. So I kind of uh, elaborate on that. So we'll just read through this. Let's take a look. And if the ear say, because I am uh, not the eye, I am not of the body, is therefore it, it not of the body? And the answer again is no. The ear is just as important as the eye. And if the whole body were an eye, where were or the hearing? And if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? So, one, we need what? All the pieces, right? That's what Paul's trying to point out here. Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. All right? So he's placed each thing in the body as it has pleased him. Just like how our body was designed in the what? Image of God. All right? And so... He's designed the body of Christ in his own image as it has pleased him. Verse 19. And if they were all one member, were all uh, of the body. We all are the body. We're all one member and we're all the body. And this is talking about the what? The believers. 20. But now are they many members, yet but one what? All right. All right. So many people make up this one body that Paul is talking about through the Spirit. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of thee. All right? It's important to keep that in mind. Now, within the body of Christ, there are always going to be disagreements. Now, if you think that's unusual, your body has disagreements with itself. You don't believe so? Your body will tell you we need to not eat that hot sausage with the hot peppers and the hot cabbage. But your tongue is like, oh man, this is going to be great. Tongue. It's gonna be, this, this is good. I love this. And so you go ahead and eat it. And then at a set time later, another part of your body is telling you, I told you <laughs> not to eat them hot peppers. Mm -hmm. Right? So, your body can argue with itself. Mm -hmm. all right? When you got a pain in your leg and you're limping, <sighs> all right? and you know you got to go somewhere, you're going, but that part of the body, because each time you put a little weight on it, it has what? Pain. Mm -hmm. That part of the body said, I don't think y'all should be walking on it. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the body says, I know, but in order to get you better, we got to get you here. We got to get you to the doctor mm -hmm. to get you better. And every time you put some step on it to get to the doctor, you feel the pain. So your body can disagree. Mm -hmm. Your eyes and your tongue and your, and, your, and your taste buds will say, and your, and your stomach will be like, I want that, I want the cookie. As a matter of fact, I want that whole sleeve of cookies. As a matter of fact, I want the whole box of cookies. And you just sit there and eat them all. all right? But then the, you know, later on, the other part of your body will be like, see, we shouldn't have ate all them cookies. Mm -hmm. So yes, there can be, there can be, disagreements within the body just like you have situations within your own body so you can have people that, that that teach one thing and you know but not the essential things some people believe in baptism with sprinkling some people believe in baptism with immersion some people say it don't matter which way you want to do it it's, but they get all bent out of shape over it but that's okay you know ain't no big deal some people believe you know certain things with well, we need to have a communion every time we come together. Well, that's fine. There's nothing no, no, no wrong with that. Some people say, well, you know, communion is just when you come together. It don't matter. You know, some people believe it like that. You know? There's a lot of ways that we can, we can have varieties and, not, and, and recognize that there are some differences in how we do things, but still be what? One body. body. And that's important to keep in mind. I have to make sure that we bring that out. Because sometimes people get all upset when they, when they recognize, well, we were all one body. We all would agree. 
your own body don't always agree. And that's all. And plus, we are not what perfected yet. We shall be perfected. All right. So I think it's important that we bring that out. Um, verse 22. Nay, much more uh, these members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. We talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. All right, we talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. And our uncomely parts have more abundance comeliness. We talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes the things that we think you don't need, you really do need. Mm -hmm. All right? And the things sometimes we think are so necessary. So, I mean, we, sometimes we spend a whole lot of time, you know, fixing the face. Mm -hmm. You know, and the ladies with the, with, the, with, the, with the makeup and the cosmetics. You know, you know what the word cosmetics, you know what the root word, the word cosmetics is? Slavery? <laughs> no. <laughs> Chaos. I just figured I'd throw that out there. You can check that out. It's true. Hmm? I know. You knew that. Cosmos. Yes. Cosmos, cosmetics. From chaos. So, you know, when y'all put your, your cosmetics on, it's because you're trying to Hide your... fix the chaos. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's, that's my own little pun out there. Take it for what you want. You can grin and smile. I ain't waiting for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, first, where would we leave off? 25? 24? Mm -hmm. For our comely parts have no, have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the parts which lacked. All right. It's important. All right. Like the colon. Exactly. That's it. Mm -hmm. see, see, you can you can have a zit or or, or thing, and sometimes you're like, oh my god, I look at this, I got this zit on my face. Oh, I look at this big old pimple. Look at this big old ah. Oh. Right. Well, I mean, but you ain't gonna die. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna have. No, you can go on about your life. You just don't want people looking at you. Mm -hmm. But you get you get a big old knot inside your colon. Now you're gonna have some pain now. You might even need a what? Doctor. doctor. See, that's the more important thing. You, that's the one you don't want no 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 issues with. Mm -hmm. All right? You don't want you don't want no bump on your heart. You don't want you don't want no no bumps on your lungs. Mm -hmm. See, those are the ones. You know, you, if I'm gonna have a bump, let me have it on my let me have it on my face or my arm or my, mm -hmm. you know, let me have it there. I don't want it on my inside parts. The parts that nobody see. Mm -hmm. Outside parts, you know, yeah, we flip out because we're trying to look wonderful, but at the same yeah. point, that if it's going to be anywhere, let it be there. And that's mm -hmm. what God does. He did a lot when you, when you, you know, growing up and everything, and you get those little, uh, you know, God allows it to happen on the outside. And it happens at the right time, too, because that's about the time you start recognizing, you know, you get vain and all that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, when you start getting, and then God says, okay, you're going to get vain, and then you just, <laughs> 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 he goes, don't be vain about that. I find it comical. I think God has a wonderful sense of humor. At the very time when, when teenagers are starting to think, oh, I'm this, and, 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 and God says, okay. People <laughs> <laughs> look like a witch. <laughs> and you got all them little bumps and everything. On. And, and we all went through it. I went mm -hmm. through it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so, but uh, I, I think it's just godly comedy mm -hmm. <laughs> that that happens. Yeah. That he says, all right, man, be red, be wonderful. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> all right. Uh, what, what, what am I on? 26? No, but that the members did stuff. That's right under 25. All right. Let's go 25. Let's start that. Okay. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. Verse 26. And whether one member suffer, oh, all the members do what? Suffer, suffer with it. You ever have a you you ever really bang your hand or stomp your feet and the rest of your body don't even care about it? Oh, they can't. Really. Everybody care. The whole body is like, mm -hmm. ooh, yeah, yep. You start when you when you smash your hand, your finger. You don't just sit there and you, and you go like this. Oh, I'm hurting. Oh, I'm hurting. Oh, I'm hurting. That ah, 
you the whole the, the arm, everybody starts. Oh, mm. Mm. you may you know you may put that finger in your mouth. You, know, you may do all kinds of things because it's hurting that pain. the whole body. And it's something about it when you stomp your toe, you feel it, and it just goes all the way up your body. Mm. Affects the whole body. Yeah, it affects the whole body. And so, all right. Verse twenty-seven. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. All right. So we. So he's saying you are the body of Christ and in particular you are a specific member. You are a specific part of the body. 28. And God has set some in, uh, in the church. He has set all in the church. Some. It's important to keep in mind. Not all the gifts are in the what? Church. Some are in the church. Alright, but then he said now the ones that are in the church he puts a order on them. Look at this. He says, first, what? Apostles. Apostles. Secondary, what? Prophets. All right. Those two people right there. Who wrote, who, who, who are the ones that, that spoke and gave God's word and were written down? Apostles. Okay. So that's the word we study from, right? Mm -hmm. Who wrote and writ, and, and written down, and, and, uh, Put down on paper the words in the Old Testament. The prophets. The prophets. Okay. The prophets. So you need apostles and prophets because they're going to tell you what truth. God says, giving you truth. They are truth tellers. And God gave them the word and gave it to them specifically as a truth. Now, now that you have the word of God that came from the apostles and from the prophets, you need somebody to do what? Teach. So what's next? Teach. Thirdly, teachers. Teach. Teach. All right. So those are the three things that you need. You need the words of the apostle. You need the words of the prophet. And you need a what? A teacher. teacher. After that, you see, you see that? See how he kind of separated those three? You have to have a, the word of God from the apostle. Do we have words of God from the apostle? Yes. And that's why people walk around today talking about I'm apostle so-and-so. Because I don't think you're speaking as God. To me, that's these are what apostles are. People that say I'm a... And, and, and I don't get hung up on it. If a person say call me apostle so-and-so... You know, that's what you want. I just don't believe apostles in the same definition. And I think sometimes it gets to semantics on how people define it. And we all can define it differently. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with prophet. And to me, a prophet is a person that will, that what his word is as if God had said it. Because God is talking directly through him. Right? It's like when, when, your, when you were growing up and your mom told one of your brothers and sisters, tell so and so, I said, get upstairs. Now, here goes little brother going downstairs. What's the word that mom said to tell big brother, come upstairs? Now, when little brother tells big brother, mom said, come upstairs, who's talking to big brother? Mom. Mom. Through little brother. And that's what a, a prophet does, an apostle. They're speaking to people. Through, God is speaking to people through this, these individuals. And it is not their word. It is whose word? God. God's word. All right? But then when you have the word, you do need someone that can actually explain it. And can give you insight. And can say, well, this is what I, I, I see God is saying. And this is what God is saying here. And that's important to know. That's how you get familiar with it. Then after that, there are miracles. Then gifts of healing and helps. Right, that's the thing that people oftentimes try to overlook. Governments, all right? I don't like government. But it's part of it. Yeah, but it's niches and it's ditches. Diversity <laughs> and diversities of tongues. Mm -hmm. So there are purposes for that. Look at 29. Are all apostles? It's a rhetorical question. What's the answer to that? No. No. Are all teachers? No. All right. Are all prophets? No. 
uh, all teachers, do all work miracles? No. Have all the gift of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? Yes. No. So, there it is. It, it, the, the scripture is showing you there is no gift in here where everybody has it. So, it's giving what? As he desires. 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts. All right. So, covet earnestly the best gifts. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, um, as we go through some of these other aspects. But, um, Okay. The, the, the gift to be able to, to tell truth, the gift to be able to interpret the truth, and the gift to be able to discern spirits are very important. Um, yes? So how do you, what makes you believe that 31 is, is pointing toward what's considered verse 13 instead of pointing to what was just previously mentioned? In, in well, because the order of, of the of the gifts, I'm just trying to figure out how how you. Make well, that it, well, that 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 first part, but covered earnestly the best gifts. Let's talk about what he just said. Oh, okay. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. Is talking about what he's giving to talk about. Okay, thank you. you see, I, I, I clump them the both together. And so it's important to see now uh, he's going to show you an even more excellent way uh, when he gets to um, verse 13. And actually, verse 14, we'll talk a lot about it as well, and uh, we'll see quite a bit. We're going to learn in these next sessions a lot about love. Not love the way the world and Hollywood and TV and all of them talk about it, but we're going to learn about love according to how God says. Love has more to do with your will, with your commitment, than anything else. So people tell me, oh, love is a feeling. Ooh, I, I see that. I just fell in love. I fell all wood. That's not love. That's infatuation. It has nothing to do with love. And this world has totally, Hollywood and TV and all of them, they have totally just distorted the word love. It does not mean that. Because when you love a person, you will stick with that person regardless. Mm -hmm. You also will tell that person the truth. And one of the problems we have today is that parents don't love their children the way the Bible says you should love. Because when you love your child, you will do what to your child? You will chasten your child. That's how that child knows you love them. Because you will not allow that child to go out and just destroy them. Well, he says that in the song. He says, I chasten those who I love. I chasten those whom I love. And that's a, a very important thing to keep in mind. All right?